setting up our MIG welder for with a, a tank. We got our tank in the in our cart. We've gotten the top off of it already, and uh, now we just purge the valve there. Just open it, and close it quickly. That gets any debris out of the out of the threads. You don't want to send any debris that might be left in there from shipping. You don't want that going through your regulator. We wrap our regulator around the tank. Also, keep that valve or keep the the line from getting caught in anything while moving it around the shop. Tighten that up, hand tight. Then then you want to snug it down good and snug. Don't want to over tighten it. Those are only brass fittings. They they will strip fairly easily. So tighten that down with with your crescent wrench or I believe it's a one and an eighth inch uh, standard wrench that works on that um, and that's a standard pipe thread fitting on there. I had already checked my my high pressure for any leaks but you just turn it on and then uh, fill your line shut it back off watch your regulator make sure it doesn't drop. Now we had our, our regulator backed all the way off to zero on the low pressure line Turn that back in to 20 pounds. That's pretty good temp, uh, pressure for welding in and inside. Outside, you might want to turn it up a little bit more, but inside, 20 pounds works sufficiently. And then uh, turn that off once again. Make sure that the, your gauges stay up. And uh, as long as they stay up, then you know you don't have any leaks. This is my Lincoln SP-135 MIG welder. MIG stands for metal inert gas. Your inert gas is your 75-25% tank of uh, argon and CO2 that we just replaced. Now, the top dial there is your arc temp. That's the temperature of which you're going to be welding. Your bottom dial is your is your wire speed. Um, that will also affect your temperature. And then your on-off switch. Basic setup for oxyacetylene welding. Um, here's the, the setup I have in the shop. Once again, just like uh, MIG welding, you got it in the cart, get your top off after you're strapped in, purge your oxygen tank, crack it open, crack, turn it back off, blow any debris out of there. Acetylene, uh, acetylene is very flammable. You're not wanting, you don't want to just crack it open. Uh, so I always wipe it out with my finger. If I see anything, go back in with a rag if I can't get it out with my finger and uh, that works quite well. Now we got our, our valves cleaned and we put our oxygen regulator on. Oxygen, female fitting, standard pipe threads and uh, acetylene is, is uh, the regulators are going to be your male fitting and a reverse thread. Most flammables are a reverse, fled, reverse thread and uh, your inert gases, oxygen, um, you know, the non-explosives are going to be a, a standard thread and a female fitting on your on your regulators. So I we get those put on hand tight and then we after we get them on hand tight then we'll go back and snug them up with the with the wrench. Get them nice and snug with your wrench. You don't want to uh, over tighten them once again. They're brass fittings so you don't want to crank them too hard. Um, Otherwise, you'll strip them out pretty easily. Uh, I like to use a. I have a just a standard hand truck that I use for my for my uh, cart, and then I just put a a regular uh, vinyl or, or ratchet strap around them and uh, crank them down. I got two ratchet straps. That works quite well. So we have our our regulators all nice and tightened down. Now we want to set our gauges, and um, so we make sure we have our our uh, valves on our torch head off. Turn them on. We turn on our valve on our ta tank, and uh, fill the regulator. We want to set the oxygen to about seven pounds of uh, pressure for for welding, welding, brazing. Uh, shrinking, leading, anything like that, uh, seven pounds. No more than seven pounds of oxygen is required. And uh, so we, I'm obviously a little too high. I must have been cutting last time, so we're going to back that off. It won't release any pressure until you open your line. So open your, your oxygen side of your, oxygen is your green, uh, your green hose. Acetylene is your red hose. So you crack the green side, your oxygen, and that'll relieve the pressure. You can turn down your oxygen 
pressure at that point on your regulator down to, I like to do it about seven pounds. And, uh, and I always make sure I have my tanks completely open. There's supposed to be a stop at the top of the tanks that keeps any, any gases from leaking out if they're not completely open. Supposedly, they'll leak. I don't know. I've never had a problem, but I always open them completely just for safety's sake. Now, acetylene, uh, we're going to want to set at uh, 4 to 5 pounds of pressure. And uh, you don't want to exceed 15 for sure. I always say don't exceed 10. Um, it gets very unstable, anything over 10 pounds, and can actually spontaneously combust. So set, it at, set your, your regulator at 4 to 5 pounds, and you're good there. And then um, you know, we're going to light it. I always use a striker. Um, as you can see, I used a high-tech striker called a Bic lighter, and um, we turn up our acetylene. You light the acetylene first with the oxygen off. Turn up your acetylene until you get a nice pure flame. Some good feathering at the end. Um, no parachute troopers. I always like those little guys that fall out of the sky, little black sooty guys. They remind me of the stormtroopers from World War II falling out of the sky. And we turn up our oxygen until we get a nice neutral flame. Um, neutral flame is you got a nice blue or white colored cone. There's no feathering around it. Um, it makes a good hissing noise, but not too bad of a sound. Um, your neutral flame is is what you're going to want to use for welding. Um, it's that's that's pretty much uh, the extent of what you're going to use neutral flame for. Um, but yeah, and then you go to next one we're going to do is a carb carbonizing or carburizing flame. Um, there you're gonna ha you're gonna turn down your acetylene or turn down your oxygen and uh, leave your acetylene the same. Turn down your oxygen. You have a little feather on the outside of your of your cone, and uh, that's good for bur uh, letting heating anything like that. Um, just a cooler flame. From there, I'm going to show you now what the uh, we go up to an oxidizing flame. Oxidizing flame is going to be the hottest of the three. You're going to want to use that for your pinpoint shrinking, um, your your brazing. Um, your cone gets real super tight, pinpointed. There's no feather around it. Um, it's uh, like I said, that's going to be your hottest, most oxygen. Oxygen makes your your the more oxygen you add, the hotter your flame gets, and vice versa. Shut it off. You always want to shut off your oxygen first, and then your acetylene. And finally, we have the cutting torch, or the smoke wrench, as some people like to call it. And same torch body, different torch head. This time, you're gonna you're gonna just leave your bottle set up exactly the same. Just turn up your your oxygen to 20 to 25 pounds of of regulator pressure on your line, and leave your acetylene at the four to five. Never leave four to five pounds with your acetylene. So. We're going to turn that up here. Um, the uh, oxyacetylene torch, um, you have two oxygen valves on the torch itself now. You have one at the line where it comes in, and then you have one up on the head. And you open the, the body completely up, and then you you do all your regulating of your, your pressure off your, off your torch head up there um, by the handle. So now we... Light it the same way. Acetylene first. Keep your oxygen off. So we crack our acetylene. Use our high-tech Bic lighter. Open it up and get a nice pure flame. No little storm paratrooper men coming out of the sky. And then you see there's no not nice good pure flame there. And then we crack open the oxygen on the top top valve. Top remember the bottom one's already open. Now bring that back to I like to go to an oxidizing flame. Most everybody recommends neutral flame. I always like to cut a little beyond my means, so I go to the oxidizing flame. Now you're gonna want to test it by hitting the end. If it if it, when you do that, you hit your trigger and it dies you aren't at the right pressure on your oxygen so you got to turn up oxygen somewhere now 
anybody that knows me knows I like to smoke cheap cigars. And this is where we piss Tiny off because we light a cheap cigar with our torch and enjoy that cigar. <laughs>